In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the many benefits of learning from watching videos, but I'm also going to warn you of the dangers. And I have to say up front that what I'm going to say is just common sense. It's not rocket science. And yet I've made these mistakes and I've seen lots of other learners use these mistakes and it's really detrimental and wastes a lot of time. Why are traditional classroom lessons sometimes difficult for dyslexics? Well, first of all, for many, and it's not everybody, it's very hard to take notes at the same time as learning new information. So if you're someone that struggles with spelling and writing, it's easy to be distracted and concentrate on the writing rather than understanding the lesson. And as a result, notes are often incomplete or incorrect. And it's very difficult if your notes are this way to use them to do homework or revise from. And sometimes some teachers are just not great at explaining their subject. Some say, you know, copy this from the board because they think writing stuff out is how you learn it, but that's not gonna help a lot of dyslexics. Also, some teachers just expect children to learn facts without really explaining why. And a lot of dyslexics like myself have to understand why before they can just parrot fashion learn something. So why learning from, diff um, from videos is helpful? Well, if you've got inadequate class notes, what are you going to use to, to revise from or to, to learn from? Traditionally, schools expect students to read in order to learn. Truthfully, if you don't read for pleasure, it's very, very hard to read big, thick textbooks full of new vocabulary and complicated processes. If you are a weak reader, like me, you might need to read and then reread in a in order to understand something. So that makes revision so much more time consuming if it's based on reading. And students that are dyslexic or students that struggle with reading can easily compare themselves to their peers and think, goodness, they're getting it much quicker than me. I must be stupid. Where in actual fact, it's just the peers are quicker readers. They're not necessarily better at the subject than they are. So I too often see students getting demotivated and giving up thinking, oh, I'm never gonna do well in exams. But it's because they're comparing their literacy and not their skills in the subjects. It's a skill in the subject that's important. So anything we can do to help them learn without having to rely on taking notes during a lesson or reading lots of textbooks is great because otherwise their exam results won't reflect their ability. So some of the dangers of learning from videos, in the first instance, searching for videos. You know, if you are a student and you don't write, understand osmosis and you go onto YouTube to go looking for a, a better explanation of osmosis, chances are you're gonna find some other interesting videos to distract you, you know, how to do Fortnite or how to improve your makeup. There's too many distractions. And so students need help finding the right videos. And then when they are actually watching the videos, it's very, very easy if they're on a device where they are also plugged into social media, they get lots of pings of updates of Snapchat or WhatsApp. And so we, it's very hard to revise or learn on an app if the social media are on it because they won't be thinking about the subject, they'll be distracted. I've seen many students lulled into a false sense of security. They feel like, oh, I've, I've really revised well today. I've been watching videos for the last three hours. When in actual fact, they were staring out the window while the videos were playing. You know, it is important that students learn as they watch the videos rather than just have them playing in the background. Same as at school, you have to engage in the lesson, you need to engage with the video. And something that you might not think of straight away is that I see students think that was a fantastic video, but then not record anywhere what the video was. And then when they want to go back and watch it again because they've realized that was the best one, they waste a lot of time researching for that video. So these are my recommendations for, for working with videos. Um, ask for help finding good videos in the first place. They can ask their teachers to recommend videos 
or their parents. I know I act as PA for my children. They'll say, look, mum, I don't really understand this particular subject in psychology. And I will go and look for videos on their behalf because I'm less likely to get distracted or a bit less likely anyway. And then I always recommend my students take good notes as they watch the videos. It's not that taking notes is not a good thing. It's when you're in a video, you can pause and rewind and re you know, it's much easier to take notes. So taking notes really helps engage the brain and helps you remember things. So do take notes, but do control the speed at which you're taking them. I strongly recommend students remove any distractions as they watch, so not having their phone. And it's quite easy to put uh, a block so social media won't pop up. And you can say, look, I'm, I'm gonna set the ad block. Well, it's not an ad blocker. There's, there's something called cold turkey, but there's a few ways of doing it. And I'll create separate videos about that. But to say, don't disturb me between this and this time because I'm revising. And then they won't be distracted and they can just concentrate because it's very hard to take on new information if, if you're continuously stopping and, and doing something else. Right, once you've finished the video, if you can explain what you learned out loud straight away, it will help embed that information in your brain and actually speaking it is great. And this is another way that parents can be really helpful if you can explain to your parents, I learned this. And if you just tell them as if you're teaching them, it will really help embed the information on your brain. And then something else you should do is a student should always just test themselves. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. They can just take a blank piece of paper and try to write down everything that they remember from the video and then maybe go back and, and either look at their notes or rewatch the video and correct any mistakes or add anything that they missed out to their notes. And this will really help embed the information in their brain. If you have a study partner, if you both agree to watch particular videos, you can decide to create quizzes for one another to test your knowledge. And in a separate video, I can show you how to create some fun quizzes, be it on Quizlet or Kahoot or one of the other packages available. Now, this next one is really, really important. I've said, take good notes, but make sure you file those notes, hole punch them, put them in a folder, and in those notes, write the name of the video. If you type the notes, cut and paste the URL of the video because so often time will pass and you'll think, oh, I need to write an essay or revise a particular subject. I remember I watched a great video on that. And then you'll go and look for the video again and you'll waste precious time that you could have spent revising, looking and looking for a video. So always in your notes, say what the video is called so you can easily find it again. It's much quicker than researching uh, before you rewatch. So they are my simple recommendations. I hope you found them useful. I really hope that you do well learning from videos. I have created a playlist of lots of wonderful videos which I hope you find useful but some of the great resources I could not include in the playlist either because they were for younger children and you cannot save videos for younger children or because the resource just didn't have any good resources on YouTube. So I've created an ebook of all the fantastic resources that I've found and you can download this by looking at the details of this video. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button, you'll be informed when I create new videos like this. Thanks a lot for watching.